Okay, so what we're going to talk about today is actually really simple. It's the scrolling effects that are available in Adobe Muse, just how to kind of add some pizzazz. Uh, you know, it's, it's really, I mean, well, I mean, it's, it's not really functional, but at the same time, it does look good. When you do it right and you have some of these scrolling effects on a web, web page, I, I've, I've always loved it. I'm a sucker for some of those things. Uh, you know, I mean, anyway, I do. I like it. So this is the page that I've got. Let me just make sure I uh, have it. So this is it. And you can see that it's um, a, simple, uh, a simple page. Everything's scrolling at the same speed, yada, yada, yada. OK, so now, um, oh, I got to change. I got to put one thing back. <clears throat> OK, so now, when you um, when you're started, your, your web page is going to look a little bit like this. I'm just going to bring these guys in here like this. OK. So your web page will look something like that. It'll preview something like that. Everything's good. Now, the reason why I had to reset the thing up here is you'll, well, you'll see it. Uh, you'll see why. So in order to do a scroll effect, it's actually super easy. I mean, really easy. All you have to do is click on the thing that you want to scroll differently. So right now, they're all scrolling at a default speed, which is considered 1. You go up to the fill, and this is where it's kind of weird. You go up to the fill, and you can click, and then there's a scroll effect. So the scroll effect is on the fill itself. And that's, I guess, a really important thing to kind of start with. When you're scrolling, the container box that this is in does not move at a different speed. It's the background image that moves at a different speed. So I'm going to show you how that works with these three rectangles here in just a second. But it's actually the container, uh, or the background of the container. So it kind of has to be a photograph number one. And that's the first thing. Um, there is also another place where you can get to them here called scroll effects here. And it's going to give me the exact same error that I'm about to see um, over here, and this is why I did it. So you click the fill, click scroll, and it's going to say to enable scroll effects, your breakpoint must be a fixed width. When I told you to create these websites, if you remember, I told you to create them as a fluid width website. Well, apparently we can't do that if you want scroll effects. I'm not exactly sure why that is. I'm sure there's a reason. I'm not sure why. So anyway, all you have to do to get this to be a fixed width is right click on the little purple bar up here at the top, and you're going to change this to a fluid, or you're going to uncheck the fluid width. And now it's going to spread out a little bit, OK? And it will say 1160. So basically, just adds 50 pixels on both sides. Now I can go ahead, click on my image, go to the Fill menu, or go over here to Scroll Effects. And you can see that I can add motion to my background image. So I check that. Now, <clears throat> if I just say 0 and 0, what's going to happen is he's going to stand still, right? So let's just say this, and let's go forward. And now, when I scroll down, the, uh, the rest of the page scrolls over top of him. <coughs> Excuse me. This is something you can also achieve, guys, please. This is something you can also achieve by pinning the box to the top of the browser, like I did with the menu bar. So it's not, it doesn't have to be, you know, um, mo you don't have to suspend the motion in order to do it. You can totally do that by just pinning the, uh, the thing. So just to prove that, I'll uncheck the motion. I'm going to click on my cube here. I'm going to pin it to the top of the browser in the center, save, and it should, should do the same thing. See, it does the same thing. So if I want a, a, a box to stay put, I don't have to use scroll effects, OK? So just to kind of make sure that everybody understands that. But if I do want it to scroll slower than the rest of the page to create that kind of cool effect, I can do that. So I'm going to notice the motion is now, I can't click on it because it knows it's pinned. So I'm going to unpin it, okay, just like that. And now all of a sudden, I can, um, <clears throat> I can check the motion. 
And let's just start with half speed. So I'm going to go half speed initial and half speed final. And what that is, is you can actually have it like change speeds. So the initial motion is right at the beginning as you start to scroll, and then the final motion is as you're finishing. So you can actually have it accelerate, I think, which is kind of cool, but not a big deal. Um, so let's save that and let's take a look at what this looks like. So we'll preview in browser. And now this is 0.5 speed. So you can see how it's moving at about half the speed of the rest of the browser. Let's accelerate it. Well, we'll, we'll play with that in a second. So then the next thing is I can do is I can, that I can do is go down here and click. And let's do the same thing with this division here, 0 0.5, <coughs> 0 0.5. Save. Now, because this one's in the middle of the page, you're going to notice this little stretched line right here. What this is, is this is basically saying, in order for this to scroll down slower, the background has to start up a little higher so that you don't see the edge of the image. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay. So it's going to um, <clears throat> put it up underneath here. You can actually change this by either dragging this or changing the numbers here. But I don't recommend doing that because it's kind of already done the math for you as to what it needs. And it's, it's usually right. It's usually pretty good. So, I mean, you can play with it if you want, but what I would recommend you do is memorize or write down the number that it put in here at first so that you kind of have a better sense of what's going on. Um, I think that you'll be happier with that because it will, it will work better. So let's save and let's preview again. And now, whoops, well, that's not supposed to happen. But now you can see how that one is scrolling at a different rate as well. Uh, I did my demo before uh, last period, and it did not do this. So that's a little odd. <clears throat> not quite sure what's happening here, but that's OK. Um, let's change the speed of this top one a little bit more uh, even and say, just making sure that nothing else is here. Um, oh, by the way, sometimes what happens is it goes negative 100 pixels here on this. This is interesting. So when you add your first one in, a lot of times this initial positioning, uh, which it calls a key position, will be set. And then it looks like this. It puts it down. Um, see, there's a white gap there. Okay, that's obviously not good, so we don't want that. So in order, if you reach that, the way to get rid of it is to um, go over here, and you're going to take that back down to zero. I have no concept of why it's um, sh why this bottom image here is showing up, other than the fact that this is too high. So I'm going to take this down. I'm going to take the key position down to a little bit further. Let's just see what happens there. Like I said, that, see, it, that is very, very, very odd. Oh, well, I'm not going to worry about it now. It probably won't do that to you. That's the first time it's ever done that to me, and, and uh, that's, that is a little frustrating. So now let's also talk about, I'm gonna, just to get rid of that, I'm going to uncheck the motion on that guy. Now. Let's talk about how I did the, if you remember my previous demo, I also had the menu bar get darker as we scroll down. We can do the exact same thing. Uh, it's, it's really the same control panel here under scroll effects. So first I'm going to create a black rectangle, just like that. <clears throat> Fill it with a, black, with a simple black color. Now I'm going to set it to a stretched browser width, which it is. And I'm going to right click, and I'm going to send it backwards once, send it backwards twice. And if I did this all correctly, my menu should be at the top. There we go. So three times. So now I've got my logo, my title, and my menu here. <clears throat> and we're going to do our scroll effect on this. So I can just click here, and instead of motion, I'm going to go to my opacity. And I can check the opacity on And here I can animate my opacity. So what we have here is we have, again, a key position. So I'm just going to save this. Let's preview it and see what the defaults do. 
Okay, nothing, absolutely nothing. So, um, right now, my um, my opacity is set. And what there was another problem with that. Did anybody notice my other problem with that? Wait, oh, we can't even see it. Why can't we see it? There's a reason. Look over here, and you'll see it's set to the pixels are all set off. So we've got to we've got to kind of work on this. So. Our, our first is our fade position one. So I'm gonna set that to zero pixels. And I'm gonna set that to uh, say 10%. Then here, my key position, we're gonna set to zero pixels. And we're also gonna set that to 10%. Then lastly, let's say we're gonna scroll down 300 pixels. Now I'll set it to, say, 70% and save. So what this means is initially it's going to start at 10% and at zero pixels it's going to be 10%. And then as we scroll down, it's going to go, it's going to animate to 70% opacity by the time we hit 300 pixels of scroll. So there's 10%. Oops, what did I forget to do? Why is it scrolling with everything? It's not pinned. Thank you very much. It's not pinned. So I go back up here. I'm going to pin this to top center. So it's going to stay with the rest of the menu bar. <coughs> and now, as I scroll down, you see how it nicely fades from 10% down to 70%. And because I built it on top of everything, all the other pieces of the page actually will um, fade in. Now, lastly, one last thing that I'd like to show you with these scroll effects. You can also do a side-to-side -side motion with them, but I highly caution you on that. And the reason why I caution you on side-to-side -side motion is because the width of your browser will cause you troubles. So, um, it won't even let me do it here anymore. Why won't it let me do it? Again, I was able to do it last period and it won't let me do it anymore. Scroll, initial motion. Oh, it lets me do it up here. That's weird. See that? It's not letting me do it here. Here, it's letting me do it. That's kind of strange, but okay. So click on that, fill, go to scroll. Let's say uh, I'll, do, I'll do zero and zero, so I don't want it to move up or down at all, but I want it to move to the side. Okay, save and preview. So now, as we start to scroll, he's moving. Yeah, that's kind of weird, isn't it? What? Yeah, I don't like it either. Um, <clears throat> however, I have seen it done to good effect where you also animate the opacity. So let's, let's go in here, scroll. Not quite sure why it's going down, though. That's that's kind of odd. Well, look at, over here. It's got a scroll effect. That's weird. So my scroll effects, I can have them in two different places. That's kind of odd. I'm not sure I like that either. So okay. So here we do scroll effect one one over. But now what I'm going to do is I'm also going to um, bring that in with a um, with an opacity. So then again, what I'll do is I'll fade it in. So zero pixels, zero percent, zero percent. And then at 50 pixels, we'll have it go to 100%. So I've seen it used in websites where, OK, that looks horrible. But then he, he fades in. You see that? He's fading in very rapidly. It does kind of hurt. Part of it's because it's so rapid. So I'm going to take this and set it to 300 pixels. This is the position of the scroll. And now it'll be a little bit more um, gradual. Only by a little bit, though. But yeah, I'm not a huge fan of that. But you can do all sorts of fun. The basic thing is you can do all sorts of fun stuff with this. Let's turn the opacity off. Whoops. Set him to 100% at, yeah, it's kind of weird. You got to 
turning it off doesn't change the uh, opacity uh, stuff that you got here. So then we're just going to turn that off. And now we've got scroll effects, turn our click back on, go back to our motion, and um, take that to 0 and 0. And now we can set that back to 0, 1, 3, and 0, 0.13. And now it's going to be a nice, um, subtle, slow scroll like this. See that? That's really nice. Okay. And I think I know why the other image was up. And the reason is because it's doing this, this uh, it seems like you can double it. This is really weird. But over here on the fill scroll, I have motion. Did I have the motion here? <clears throat> so I think I had it twice. I think I had it twice. So let's see if this messes up again. Nope. Now it's normal. Yeah, so I must have had motion set on it twice. So good cautionary tale. This was not supposed to be part of my original demo, but good cautionary part of, of, of this is you can set double motion on here. So I've set it up here with the fill, okay? And then I could also go over here and I could check it again and then I could continue adding more motion to it. That's a little bit, that's weird. I don't like the fact that Muse does that to you, but here you go. So you can see how I've built in some nice simple motion. One of the things that I might do is like grab in, um, grab a, a, a picture of a person in a t-shirt here and then I might fade them in and have them slide in from the side for this one and then this one slide in from the side on this side. But remember it's only for background images. You can't do it for solid colors and you can't do it for the boxes themselves. So I can't have the box slide in like that. There is a way to do that in code, but not with the scroll effects. It's a completely different thing to do, and I don't know if Muse allows you to, to alter the position of an actual cue or box itself, one of the rectangle tools. I don't know if it lets you do that. Um, I'm sure that there's a, a module, a, um, a widget out there that would allow you to do that. But does this make sense? So you click, you go to the fill, you click scroll, here's your scroll effects. But just be mindful that you can also do it over here under scroll effects, and guess what? You can double them up. That's really odd, and I don't like that, okay? So once you start it in one location, don't have it in the other location, okay? Because I think you're going to end up in trouble. Any questions? That's all I got.